Hi everyone and welcome to this Falcari Sound tutorial on adaptive audio for environments. In this video we're going to create a system that counts the number of tree components around the player as they move into and around a forest. As the number of trees goes up and down, different sounds are faded in and out and one shot sounds for birds and other animals are triggered by the number of trees as well. Although this tutorial focuses on the forest, you can apply these steps to any environment that uses Unreal Engine's procedural foliage spawner, urban spaces, asteroid field strategy games, basically whatever sort of mesh you want to use. To set up the custom collision, go to Edit, Project Settings, and on the left hand side go to Collision, and here you've got some options to be able to add new object channels or new trace channels. It's the trace channels that we want, new trace channel, type in the name that you want to use, and the default response we're going to put down to Ignore. If we take this the generic cube, add that in. And have a look at its collision settings. If you change those to custom settings so we can see them, you see that this new one is added in and it's set to ignore. So by default any new item that we add into the game or into the world will have that option as ignore by default. So we make sure that we are only counting the things that we're interested in ignoring the numbers of. To make the procedural forest go to edit, editor preferences, and under experimental, tick the procedural foliage option. It's experimental, so it might not behave in exactly the way that you want, so just be aware. Next, in the foliage folder that you've already created in the content browser, right click, foliage, and then procedural foliage spawner. Once you've created that, we also want to come back here and create a static mesh foliage. Once you've got that one, open it up. Add in the mesh that you want to use in this drop down here and update all of the settings below. I'm going to concentrate on just the audio side of things, but I've linked two good videos to watch from Epic and from Nitrogen on YouTube on setting up the foliage spawner, so you can check those out. The only thing that we're going to cover here for this tutorial is the collision. This is where we're going to use the custom channel that we created earlier on. So scroll down to the collision preset section, and it's probably going to be on block all or no collision, Set that to custom, and here we can see that the custom channel we made earlier, trees, we change that to overlap, it means that we can count the number of items that use this channel. So save that, and that needs to be done for any static mesh that you want to count. So my setup, if it's a flower, I'm not going to change the collision, I'm just going to leave that as ignore. So repeat that for as many assets as you want to use in your forest, and add those into the foliage spawner. Next, we're going to make our forest sound cue. So right click in the content browser, sounds and sound cue. I've got four WAV files that I've dragged into mine. You can download them using the link below. And I've hooked each one up to three mixers. And then that goes to a crossfade at the end. We're going to use the crossfade node to smoothly transition from one sound to the next. And this is what each of the layers sounds like. And this is how I set out the crossfade by param node. We've got the param name here, so we can reference that in the character blueprint later on. We've got three inputs, and each layer has its own fade in start and end, its own fade out start and end. And as you can see from the values, I'm overlapping them. So I've got 8 and 10 here as a fade out for the first input, and 8 and 10 here for the fade in on the second input. The final input has a fade out of 40. 50 far in excess of any value that our system is actually going to produce and that's because we're not going to fade out the final sound. I've made the second layer the widest ranging from 8 to 21 and the total range when we set the blueprint up is going to be 0 to 25. This setup might need some tweaking depends on what sounds you're using, the density of the trees on the map or what things you're counting, the size of the sphere that we're going to use to trace from the character, the speed in which the character moves across the map and the types of sound environment that you're trying to make. So I mentioned that we have the forest sound cue, but we also have one for the grassland. This is just a default sound to run in the background when the player isn't inside the forest. 
so we can demonstrate transition from one area to another. And all this is, is just a sound that we've dragged in and we set this to looping and that's it. Once you've got your sounds, you then need to drag them into the third person character and drop them in the upper left section here. And that's just for the forest and the grassland. Next, we're going to open up the character blueprint and everything in the green section here is controlling what happens when we move through that forest. This orange bit here at the end is to do with one shot sounds, so we'll come back to that in a bit. But for now, we'll start off just by going through these in step. First of all, we want an event tick that goes into a sequence. So we're going to count the number of trees, add a new variable for that as an integer variable, and I've called this tree count. Drag that in from the variable section as a get, and then hook that up to a greater than node, and the lower value of made six. Then plug that into a branch, and if that's true, if the number of trees is greater than six, check to see if the grasslands sound cue is already playing. If it is, we want to fade that out. Set a fade out duration of two seconds for that. And after two and a half seconds, we're going to cull that. We're going to stop that sound cue. And we're going to reset this function here. This allows us to go in and out between the field and the forest, allowing us to reset the sound each time. So if this value is false, if the number of trees isn't greater than six, we are going to play the grassland sound and fade it in again by two seconds. So from our second sequence output, we're going to add a multi-sphere trace by channel. And this allows us to use the custom channel that we created before. Drag in a reference to the capsule component from the top left. And from that, we want to get world location node. Plug the start and end into the return value. And I've set the radius here to 1750. We then attach a length node. And length basically tells us how many assets there are within the sphere radius that match the criteria of being part of the trees channel. If that value is greater than one, then we are going to play the sound. But because we need to allow the player to move in and out of the forest, and we don't want the sound to behave erratically, from the true, we're gonna run a do once node into the play node to play the sound. And that'll be the end of that section. But if this value is not greater than one, so basically if the player's moved out of the forest, we want to stop the sound from playing. So when the player's moved away, we're going to reset this do once node. And that means that when the player comes back within proximity of the forest, we can start playing that sound again. From the third execution pin of the sequence, again, we need another reference to the capsule component. And we use the get world node, plug it into the start and end of a multi-sphere trace by channel. The radius this time is set to 1250, and we're setting the trace channel to trees. From that, again, we get the length node. And then from there, we add the tree count as a set node. A debug section here, which just covers how many trees we have in the total count. You don't have to do that bit. From the set tree count node, we want to run a sequence. And from that, we need two new custom variables. So we need two floats, one previous tree count and the current tree count. We are going to get the previous tree count and we're going to have a delay of a couple of seconds and we're going to get the current tree count. We're going to fade between the two values. For the crossfade by param node to work effectively in the sound queue, it needs to be a float value. So by using a lerp node between a value that's two seconds old and the current value, we can artificially create a nice smooth transition. Once you've created these two variables, add the previous tree count one as a set and hook that up to your first output in the sequence node. And then you want to get the tree count that we created earlier. Let's get tree count, drag that in as a get. And from the output, plug that into previous tree count and it will automatically convert to a float. And from the second execution out pin of the sequence, add a delay of two seconds and then the set current tree count if you drag that in as well and hook that up to the same float output that we've converted from the tree count. Next, add a lerp node. And this is the one under float. And you want to hook up the previous tree count is the A and the current tree count is the B. And the alpha, I've set mine to 0 0.005. Again, it'll debug section if you need to know what this value is. But we're going to run out from that lerped value to the set float param node, which is going to feed into the crossfade by param node in the sound queue. Got the param name there as forest size 
and it's the same param name here and the in name of the setful parameter node. And we've got our sound cue added in here on the left and hooked up to the target there. That's pretty much it really for that section. What we can also do though, if we have more custom channels or more things that we want to count, we'll just do the same process again, just changing the trace channel to match whatever else it is that we want to count. So I've got magical area here. We get the capsule components location, get the length, the total number of items within the sphere radius that match that value. Is it greater than zero in this case? Do we have one of those things? And if it's true, we play a message. And then we also play a sound cue. We again, we're checking to see is that sound cue already playing? If it's not, then we play it. If it is, we have a slight delay and then we go back and check again until it's not playing so the player can re-trigger that sound if they move in and out of range. Next, we're gonna create two sound cues, one for ground animals that'll use the XY coordinates and another one for birds that'll use XY and Z coordinates. Some systems might not really register the Z coordinates very well or at all because most speaker setups tend to be flat, but in good headphones and VR setups, this could be pretty useful. Our first one shots is set up like this. We have all of those plugged into a random node and then that goes into a modulator node. And we've just left that with the settings as they are. And that goes into the output. For the birds one that has the Z element, I only have one sound cue for that. That goes into a mixer because that was very loud compared to the other assets I was using. So I've trimmed that one right down. That also goes into a modulator node and I've adjusted this one a little bit. So to set this up, we're gonna create a new function in the character blueprint. In the function section over on the left, click add function, and I've called this spawn local sound. This is what the final result looks like. We can plug in the spawn sound that we want to use here, or the array of spawn sounds that we're gonna add. We have the option to add an attenuation setting. So how the sound is going to behave as it spawns closer or further away from the player. The distances it will spawn in, and a Boolean option here for including the Z axis. And if it does, min and max for those. So let's have a look and see how this is set up. For spawn sound, this is a sound base. Attenuation setting. And then we have six floats. And then finally, we have a Boolean for include Z. From the execution pin, we want a branch. So let's look at this one, which uses the Z axis. So from that branch, hook up the include Z boolean to the condition. And then we want to go from true all the way along to spawn sound attached. This is the thing that we're actually going to update with all of these settings. From spawn sound, we want to run out and attach that to the input sound on the spawn sound attached node. From attenuation setting, we're just hooking this up to the attenuation settings. X min is gonna be attached to two random floats in range. What this is going to do, the reason that we have this set up with the minus one values here, so this allows us basically to put sounds in front of, as well as behind the player, and to the left and the right, only using one input for each of the x, y coordinates. And the x max gets plugged into the max value for those two. We do the same again for the y min and for the y max. For the z min, it's a little easier because we don't need a negative value for that. We don't want anything to spawn beneath the floor. You might want to, depending on what sounds you're generating. If you have underground creatures, Z min is gonna to go to a random float and range min and Z max to the max input. Then for our two X random float and range nodes, one goes into a multiply by, and the value there should be minus one. And we're gonna plug the output from that and the output from this second random float node in range up to another random float in range. And that return value is going to go into an X value here. For this bit, we get a reference to the capsule component, world location node. And from there, we want to get a vector plus vector node. And for the lower pin, if you right click and split struct pin, and that allows us to input X, Y, Z values as floats. That takes care of the X. It's the same setup for the Y. Next, the extra bit that I've got here is another random float and range attached to a pitch multiplier. And on the spawn sound attached node, make sure that your location type is set to keep world position. And 
attach a capsule component reference to the attach to component input of the spawn sound attached. So for the section that doesn't use the Z axis, it's exactly the same setup. We are just dumping the section that goes into the Z axis here. Once we've done that, compile and save it. And then we want to go to the, the event graph to set up our one shot section here. So we drag in tree count again as a get, plug that into a greater than integer, set my value to 12 and then to a branch. And this is coming off from the set float parameter section. We want a new variable, which is play one shots. From the true output of the branch, we want to set play one shots as ticked. Is the tree count greater than 12? If it is, yes, we can play one shots. If it isn't, no, we can't play one shots. From play one shots, yes, we go to another sequence. And from the top one, we go to a delay node. And the delay node has a random float in range that I've put between five and nine and a half. And then from the completed, we'll go to a branch which checks can we play one shots? If it's true, it goes to the spawn local sound function we created and it'll continually, continually loop. We are feeding the output execution back into the delay. The sounds we're going to use are from a new variable we create. So this one I've called audio array forest one shots. This is another sound base, but instead of just being a single variable, this is an array. And that allows us to add sounds into it, as many sounds as we want. From this, we are adding a last index, which is basically saying how long is the array. So the random integer and in range is going to go from zero to whatever the maximum is of the last index value and into a get node. And then the output of that gets fed into the spawned sound. We've got an attenuation setting. We've got an X min and max and Y min and max. I'll come to the attenuation in a moment. From the second sequence, we're going to spawn our Z sounds. And it's the same type of array again. And I've got that second asset that I created for that with the bird. Same setup. Can we play the one shots if we can? Just keep looping around. And this time, of course, down here, we have the Z, min and max set and ticked to include the Z axis. And that's it for that section. I've set my attenuation in a radius and fall off distance to match the min and max values of the X and Y coordinates in the third person character blueprint. So that was 250 and 750. And that means that as the sound is spawned further away, it's going to sound further away. And that's it. Remember that we can also use the procedural audio spawner for any other static mesh and still use the same audio system we've set up here to control what ambient and environmental sounds will play. If we had a procedurally spawned city, for example, we could trigger ambient sounds and music for each district using the custom trace channel. Or if we had a procedurally generated dungeon, we could trigger sets of environmental sounds based on the types of wall, materials, enemies, or unique items are there. As always, take care, and thanks for watching.